In the media, we're seeing reports that this is going to be a major transition or inflection point for Japan, and that it is going to turn in one of two directions. It is either going to be the end of Japan as we know it, the political situation will deteriorate, the economic malaise will continue, um, and Japan will retreat from the world stage. Or this will be a galvanizing event. Japan will unify. It will develop stronger political and economic institutions, um, and it will develop uh, more innovative and creative responses to its political and economic problems. I think this analysis is half right. That is, it is a moment of transition, I, but I don't think that the uh, first scenario is plausible. So the real choice is whether this is going to be an event that galvanizes Japan a little bit or one that galvanizes it a lot. Um, those, I think, are the realistic scenarios. And we can already see in this short time that it has been changing Japanese politics. Um, <clears throat> and we can see this, I think, most clearly by looking at Prime Minister Khan's fortunes before the earthquake and after the earthquake. Prior to the earthquake, um, there was a lot of betting that Prime Minister Khan would not be lasting very long in his position. The logic was that his party, the ruling party, has a majority in the lower house but not the upper house. This meant, meant that it was possible for the government to pass the budget itself, uh, but not any of the related bills that would actually give that budget substance. To do that, they would need some help from other parties. And the other parties were not particularly willing to give it, particularly because they felt that if they could obstruct any progress on legislation, they might be able to force the Khan government to call an election. Um, and that would give them an opportunity, if not to regain the House, certainly to do some serious damage to the uh, DPJ, which had won a huge victory in the 2009 uh, lower house election. So the prospects for Khan himself and for the DPJ were grim. Uh, people were predicting that Khan would have to be replaced soon, that there might be a lower house election soon, um, and that Japanese politics would be characterized by gridlock. What has happened after the earthquake? Um, there is a new spirit of cooperation for obvious reasons. Um, the uh, LDP, the major opposition party, which ruled Japan for almost 50 years before the 2009 election, um, has agreed to cooperate with the DPJ on passing bills related to earthquake recovery. So there is a kind of a, a, a moment of national unity. Um, and it looks like uh, the key bills will pass. Uh, prime Minister Khan has a new lease on life. There's not likely to be a change in the prime minister or an election called very soon. Um, so that's, I guess, the good news. Um, there are still signs of competition within this new cooperative um, uh, moment. That is, for example, the LDP is still saying, well, because of this earthquake and this Im huge imperative for national recovery, I think we should uh, get rid of the previous agenda that the DPJ had, for example, um, trying to increase child care subsidies and some of the social policies. So the opposition is saying, let's scrap the old agenda. We've got a new agenda. So there's still some kind of tactical jockeying. But having said that, it's a, it's a pretty big change from outright conflict to cooperation and from real gridlock and instability to at least a moment of temporary stability in Japanese politics.